Hola a todos, bienvenidos. In this video, I'm going to talk about my experience as an American tourist, you know, from the US, <laughs> vacationing in Nicaragua. This is the second part in a three-part series about Nicaragua, learning more and more about the country over the last six years. So if you haven't seen the previous videos, go check that out here. They're about my first impressions, problems with speaking Spanish, and different things that made me excited and nervous to be there. This video will be more about vacationing, being a tourist in Nicaragua, and learning more about the country as an outsider. By the way, my daughter is currently sleeping, so if she just sleeps through this entire filming, I will put a clip of her at the end of this video just to, you know, who doesn't want to see such a cute little happy face? Soy Darlene, a Spanglish-speaking mama, and on this channel we speak Spanglish, all about Nicaragua and life as a bicultural family. If you're interested in this type of content, consider subscribing and let's get into the video. I broke this down into three different areas and the first is first impressions of public transportation, my impressions of life in the city, and then things I noticed in more touristy areas of Nicaragua. Primero lo primero, first thoughts on public transportation. There are so many different modes of transportation in Nicaragua, mostly public transportation. And I am from a small town. There was maybe like two taxis in the town that I lived in and zero other public transportation. Way back in the mining days of my town, there used to be a train that went from our city to a couple cities south, not very far. But now that all that mining population is gone and during the time I was growing up, there was very few people. I guess it just doesn't make sense to have public transportation. In Nicaragua, there's the big yellow school buses, which are used as ruta and I don't know what they call it. It, the other, it's just a public bus, I guess, that goes between cities. They have the ruta, they have microbuses, they have triciclos, they have taxis. They have big buses that take you on what they call excursiones. And each different type of bus or route has a different reason for being there. Some buses just go inside of the city, some go between city, certain cities and they go between specific times during the day, like they might start at 6 a.m. and go until 3 p.m. It depends where you wanna go, how much you're willing to pay and how fast you want to get there. My first few times taking different public transportations, I was so confused and did not really understand. I couldn't have used it by myself. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. I never saw any schedules posted for any of these different types of transportation. I mean, obviously taxis you don't have a schedule for, but I guess I just thought you learn it from your parents, you learn it from going on different routes, and you just figure it out. I mean, yeah, some buses have like the Interlocales, for example, they have maybe Chinandega Managua on them, like it says on the front of the bus in the back or the side or wherever, where to and from they go between. But then like inside of Managua, the rutas, rutas, <laughs> they just have a number on them. And I think you just kind of have to know where each number route goes and what parts of the city they cover and at what times. <laughs> because some people take those to work or to school or to whatever, wherever they're going. <laughs> and then also, <laughs> I could not see addresses anywhere. There were no street signs to be seen, no house numbers like we have here in the US. Every street has a name, every house has a number on it. And houses have mailboxes. I did not see any of these things in Nicaragua and I was very confused as to how people knew where to tell anyone where you're going. But I soon discovered, you would say, for example, I wanna go two blocks south of Banpro. Drop me off on the corner. <laughs> you kind of have to know like specific landmarks in the city and which way your north and south are and you're up and down, you know, from that place in order to tell the taxi driver where you want to end up. Segundo, life in the city. So transportation, yes, that is like city life. And I mean, this is life all over Nicaragua. You need to use public transportation for the most part, unless you can afford having a car or a motorcycle or a bike or whatever it be, might be. But other things I noticed as far as life in the city, when I first started going to Nicaragua those first few times, one thing was groups of kids going to and from school and you knew they were going to and from school because they were all wearing uniforms. Most girls with a dark blue skirt and a white shirt and then always the tall socks and nice shoes and the boys with blue like dress pants and a nice shirt. Normally polos are worn, a white polo. And to me when I was noticing these kids, I was like, why does it seem like they're going so many times a day? You, you would see kids, 
in the morning and then in the afternoon and then in the later afternoon. And I never knew if they're going to or from. I thought maybe they were going home for lunch and then going back. But come to find out, kids actually do have a morning session and an afternoon session. So if you go to school in the morning, your sibling might go to school in the afternoon. Different grades go at different times, if that makes any sense. So yeah, it kind of does seem like there are kids walking to and from school at all times of the day. Another thing, and I guess this isn't specifically like city life because it's all over Nicaragua as well, but bikes and motorcycles, you do not go one or two to a bike or motorcycle. Those things are built for more than that, aren't they? If you need four or five people, you, you pile them on. Well, I guess bikes is more like two people, sometimes three if there's a small child or that. And then motorcycles, yeah, three, four people. Everyone's supposed to be wearing a helmet. They do have a law that you're supposed to wear a helmet on a motorcycle. Pero no importa how many people are on it. I also notice quite a lot of people out on their like front step or patio just chatting at all hours of the day. This is sort of a pastime in Nicaragua, like if you just finished your laundry, you just go sit on your patio and chat for a while, or if you just finished making lunch, or if you're waiting for the rice to cook, or whatever it may be, hay mucha gente at all times of day sitting out chatting. A lot of times in wooden rocking chairs, they're just so common there. Another thing I just have to mention here is these arm covering things. If you've never seen them before, they're like the sleeve cut off of a, like an athletic type of shirt and so they go from like your wrist up to your maybe your elbow or your middle of your bicep ish i think they actually could pull all the way up to your shoulder but <laughs> where i come from there's not much sun and most people really like when the sun is out they like to have the sun shining on their skin but in nicaragua there is so much sun all the time and it's very hot <laughs> and I'm sure this is common in many other countries, you buy these sleeves and you put them on maybe your one arm, like if you're driving, you put on this arm so you can you know, have it out the window, resting on the sill, or if the sun is coming from this way, you might wear this one, and it's just to block your skin from the sunshine. Of course, it seems very normal to me now. I totally get it. But when I first started seeing that, I was a little confused. By the way, as I was going through making notes for this video and remembering different memories from the past like six years, I knew this could end up to be a very long video and the same thing could happen as my first part first part of this series which actually tended up to be three videos so in order to keep it from getting a little too crazy and long I'm trying to keep it shorter so if there's any one thing that you'd like more details about or like a more in-depth I can certainly make a video about that just comment down below and let me know I'd love to share more about my story <laughs> On to things I noticed about more touristy places in Nicaragua. Almost every place you go, not when you're parking in the city or when you're parking at a store or that type of parking, but if you're going to a specifically tourist place, and I think this is pretty common in the US even, you do pay for parking and it's maybe one or two dollars max. But then there's always a person in the parking lot, sometimes wearing a security vest, sometimes just wearing their regular clothes, but someone is always there taking down license plate numbers and just watching over the parking lot, I think, por todo el día. And that's their job, to be in the parking lot. And I'm guessing it's just another measure of security. I'm not 100% sure, but that's my thought anyway. If you know for sure, comment down below, let us know. Also, when I went to tourist destination places, we would sometimes see a school bus show up with a lot of people. And at first I was like, you know, are these people from school? Is this like a field trip? Like what exactly are these people doing and where they're from? But then I realized that most of the time these buses are full of all types of people, all ages. And so it didn't really make sense that they'd be coming from a school. I later learned, of course, <laughs> that these are called excursiones. And this is people from one city, basically, I don't know if the church organizes it or just a group of people organized where they want to go to a certain place, so they all chip in like a few dollars and rent a school bus, pay a driver to drive them there, be there for the day, and then drive back in the school bus at the end of the day. So that's a way that people can get out of their cities and take like a vacation day when they don't have their own vehicles or their own funds to pay a personal driver or rent a car for the day. Also, scheduling seemed very confusing to me at the time, which still is a little bit like, what? But for example, when we went to Ometepe Island, Tomas had to be in charge of scheduling our spot on the ferry to get our car on there and get tickets to and from the island because it just wasn't nearly 
as easy and obvious as it is when you normally go to like a national park in the US or you know most tourist parks and things like that. And also when my older sister and my grandma came to visit me in Nicaragua, my second time there I think or my third, we wanted to go on a tour. There's this tour place that brings people to different tours that is based out of Leon. We were in Chinandega, so we had to figure out how to get from Chinandega to Leon, be on time to take that tour for the day. And then once we're done with our tour, figure out how to get back from Leon to Chinandega, where our hotel was. It's about 40 minutes away. You wouldn't normally take a taxi that far, and obviously we couldn't walk, and we didn't have bikes or anything. So trying to figure out what bus we should even take, what time they would leave, what time is the last bus coming back to Chinandega, all of that, <laughs> I don't think, well, I... <laughs> I hesitate to say I don't think I could have. We could have figured it out together. But anyway, I'm very thankful that I had already known Tomas at the time because I ended up asking him what bus we should take, what times they go. And so I knew you had to go to El Bisne to get on a bus to go there. You know, I can't remember the details for 100% sure, but I know I had asked him a thing or two about trying to get around and what kind of things we could do around there. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the thumbs up if you did. Let me know in the comments what memories you have of some place you've been to as a tourist. I really love connecting with you guys in the comments. Share this video with someone you think might also enjoy it and subscribe for more. Gracias por ver. I'll see you next Saturday with the next part in the series on learning more about the daily local life of the average Nicaraguan and having my own personal ties to the country. Bye. She's still sleeping. Push it. No, here. There. Push it. Hold your hand, your hand. Oink, oink, oink. What does the cow say? Push it. Here. Gracias por ver. Excuse me, I'm talking.